this morning more grief and new details in Newtown, Connecticut. Friends of the killer's mother says she spent her final days at a luxury resort in New Hampshire. She returned on Thursday night. And just hours later, her son killed her and then launched that deadly rampage at the school. Think about this. Would the response over this tragic shooting be different if the gunman was not a white man? Should white men be profiled? In many of the recent mass shootings, the gunman has been a white man or teenager. Columbine, Tucson, Aurora, and now in Newtown. This weekend on MSNBC, Salon.com's David Sirota said, quote, if this was any other kind of demographic, you would be hearing that in a much different way, a much uglier way. No surprise, this topic has started quite um, a debate, sometimes a very nasty debate. David Sirota joins us now from Denver. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. First off, explain to our audience what you mean when you say we'd be hearing about this in a much uglier way. Well, right now we're talking about all sorts of things. Gun control. We're asking questions about a, a culture that, that too often glorifies violence. We're having a, a fairly nuanced conversation in this country right now after this mass shooting. And I think we'd be having a much narrower conversation after this mass shooting and these all of these mass shootings if most of the shooters had been let's say uh, arabs or if most of the shooters had been black men the conversation would be a much different conversation pr potentially a conversation about racial profiling uh, profiling s uh, single demographic groups of people we're not having that conversation and i'm not saying i want to have that conversation but the point is we're not having those narrower discussions because the one group in question here, the group, the demographic group that has been the perpetrators of 70% of these mass shootings has been white men, which is the one group in America that's effectively not allowed to be profiled in that kind of way. Now, so I'm not what, arguing what, for that what, kind what of profiling. What would the conversation be if it were a, a Muslim? Well, I think, you'd, I think you'd have all sorts of, of questions about whether we should intensify the already existing uh, racial, pro, racial and ethnic profiling programs that have been deployed against the Muslim and American community or Arab American community. You'd be having that kind of conversation. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not saying I think white men should be racially or ethnically profiled any more than I think Muslims and Arabs should be racially and ethnically profiled. We know that those, those kinds of practices actually don't work, and they're also, I, I would say, uh, they're bigoted in their, in their very construction. But it's important to remember what the differences are in an aftermath of tragedies like this based on people's ethnicity and race. And, and, and I'd like to say your comment was actually in response to a congressman who implied the Secret Service should conduct profiling, the profiling to find these mass killers before they strike. And, and, you, and you just said it. That would be an awfully difficult to do because just take, for example, Adam Lanza. As far as we know, he's never been violent. He was quiet and withdrawn and different. But as far as we know, he wasn't violent in any way. So how do you profile that type of person to prevent mass shootings? I think it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question, and I think that that's going to be the conversation about uh, mental health services in the next coming weeks and months. My hope is that after this, when we realize how we responded to this in the conversation, a nuanced conversation, that the next time there's something bad happens, that we hesitate to ascribe to entire groups the actions of single individuals. We, we basically, when it comes to people of color, we, we tend to ascribe to the entire group of those people the actions of their individuals when we don't do the same for white guys. And I would hope that the next time something bad happens, we step back and we say we're not going to make into a group analysis the actions of single individuals because that's bigoted and it's offensive. David Sirota, contributor for Salon.com. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me.